It's a great pleasure talking to you, Pastor Tine Bakari. My pleasure, Sheldon. I look through your State of the Nation address. Uh, I mean, it gives me a, a different inspiration altogether when I watched it uh, live when you were speaking of the podium. But when you said it is time to renegotiate our union in your State of the Nation speech, what exactly did you mean? Well, people come together, nations come together, ethnic nationalities come together because they want a better future for themselves. And for example, if you get married to a woman, you think, you know, your future prosperity. Now, I know the British lumped us together without so much of our self-will involved. But then our leaders also went to England to negotiate how we will peacefully coexist as a people. And up until independence, you would discover that there were so many constitutional conferences. And then we arrived at living together under what is called a federal system. The, the, the then regions ceded some of their power to the center. But right now, it's not what it used to be. So we need to sit down and say, it's not working. And if it's not working, let's renegotiate. We can't continue this way. Is renegotiating the issue or restructuring, and which brings me to the issue of, uh, do you believe in the word restructuring in the first place? I do, absolutely. And I used it a number of times. I just use, it is time to renegotiate our union to say, we can't continue this way. Let's sit down, put on our thinking cap, and reason for a change. Is it working? Because a lot of people will say that what you mean by renegotiation is uh, deciding whether we should be together or we should fall apart. Well, if you followed my antecedent, I'd never advocated Nigeria breaking apart. We are better off as a people, but we cannot, ex we cannot coexist this way that we, we are now, uh, or maintain what you call a level of cordiality amongst the ethnic nationalities that constitute what is called Nigeria. Principally, uh, everyone wants to go in one way or the other. But I'm not advocating that we split our country into. We are better off. Uh, for so many reasons, economically, we are better off. And we have cross-married. Uh, a number of people. I have friends east, west, and north of this country. I was born in the south. I was raised in the north. I have friends across. Who do I want to shoot? Who do I want to go? If Nigeria breaks, you will paralyze West Africa. I'd never advocated that, and I would never advocate it. But if we sit to the table and ask for renegotiation, the issue of uh, uh, going our different ways might come. Are you afraid of that? Not afraid of it, uh, but I would rather we do not get there. But if it gets there, God forbid, Whoever is responsible for it will go down history as a person who destroy what could be, have been better handled. I know that a constitution that does not bend will break, but I think we trust will give or take, it will bend and will make amends necessary before catastrophe sets in. So what's your own concept of restructuring? The present 36 states are just as I said in that address, uh, vegetable states on life support from the center. It's not working. They can't pay their salaries. They can't do anything meaningful, except they go to Abuja once in a while or every month to get what they call federal allocation. It wasn't so. At the independence, it wasn't so until the military struck. As a matter of fact, the regions were more or less funding the center. And right now, you have 36 states that are just like uh, federal government parasitas that they are trying to state manage here, state manage here. It's not working. Let's group ourselves together. And somehow, the geopolitical zone, however the language came, wherever it came from, some have credited it to late Dr. Ekweme's uh, committee or what have you, they're big enough, and, they can, and I, I'm glad that even APC's thinking 
and in, in their paper, in what they've just submitted to the public recently, they said, oh, states can march. I agree with the APC's recommendations on what they time, they are a form of restructuring all the time. They've coined it as true federalism. Do you agree with those recommendations? Do they believe in true federalism? If you believe in true federalism, in a true federal arrangement, a true federalism, it is the federating units that give power to the center. We have turned it upside down. We now ask the center to, to determine what happens in the states. That was not what it was at the beginning. APC, as in their recommendation and the memorandum they submitted to the leadership of the party, they are recommending a measure of state devolution of power. They want the center to shed some more powers. They are also recommending that the local government, the states, should take uh, uh, more possession of the local government administration. These are issues that are germane. They are also talking about state policing and federal policing. Are these reasonable for the, the, the nature of our polity? It's a good starting point that at the long last, APC is waking up to what it proposed to do during the campaign. But whether Nigerians are going to trust the party that, oh, it's not because of 2019 is a different matter. Because you remember, at a point, it was dismissed by everyone almost in, in leadership position in that party. Like, all this restructuring uh, is, is a waste of time. And to compound the matter, um, uh, Mr. President also said, what we need right now is, is uh, a reformation in our processes and not restructuring. And, uh, and I, I did respond that truly Mr. President is right. Our processes need reformation because if, if, if it's properly run, we won't appoint dead people to aid parastaters and two security agents of the same federal government will not be fighting themselves on the street. It's interesting. And so it brings me to the point, a lot of people have said, look, if we do not restructure this country in 2019, it portends a lot of danger for this country. Do you believe so? I truly believe, and I believe we should not put the car before the horse. Whatever it is, the federal government should sit right now. I advocated that privately. I have done it publicly. I submitted memorandum also to the APC committee. I submitted to Mr. President. I would said it on our platform. I would shared this view. Look, we are putting the car before the horse. We will not go forward. We will go backwards. And that's going to be... What are you actually advocating for? Pardon me? No, you, what you're advocating for, what exactly is that? Let's, let's restructure. Electoral cycle for four years is, is causing this country to bleed and will bleed to death. You're, got, you're going to find money that should be used for developing the nation, waste it on, 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 on things that really don't count. Recycle the same people over and over again, and just every four years we must go to the polls. Every four years we must go to the polls. What has electoral cycle or electoral crazy produced for Nigeria? What we practice as electoral crazy is election that we are concerned about, not democracy itself, not caring about what the needs of the people are and what they are clamoring for. <coughs> Look, even in, even in proper legal systems, when a man and a woman cannot live together again, they go to the law court and say, we need a dissolution of this marriage for irreconcilable reasons. But we have not gotten there. We don't want to get there. You don't want to get to the place where we'll start shooting ourselves and killing ourselves. I understand from top military people that no nation has survived two civil wars. We should not plunge ourselves there. It's like Nigeria is in a state of war already. Look at all the killings taking place in our nation. I mean, I'm hearing one minister say we need cattle colony. For God's sake, is that leper colony or what it is?